The following program is sponsored by USA United Stage Associates. Welcome into another telecast of the LMC Varsity Sports. I'm Charlie McGraw alongside Rob Moretti, and we have a good one for you today as the number two seed in the Marinette Tigers uh, survived another game last time, Rob, against that Cl uh, Clarkstown. They only won 1 0 in double overtime. That was a, a team that was, what, the 10 seed? For the seven seed, seven seed, seven seed, and now they play the six seeded North Rockland uh, Red Raiders, a team that beat them in the same exact game a year ago, a whole different team, and then they just beat them in overtime in the regular season. But what does Mamaroneck have to do? Because they just barely squeaked by in that uh, quarterfinal, and they have an even tougher game, as you told me, in the semifinal. Absolutely, North Rockland versus Clarkstown. You want to compare those two opponents. Clarkstown did a great job in that game playing defense. They got great play out of their goalie. And Mamaroneck outpossessed Clarkstown for, I'd say, that 80% puck possession and just couldn't put it in. The key for Mamaroneck today is they've got to score earlier than in double overtime. North Rockland has some offensive weapons, uh, definitely more so than Clarkstown did. Uh, they also play strong team defense. They have a good goalie as well in Angelo Zoda. So for Mamaroneck to win this game, they've got to go out, put some more pressure on offense. They've got to stop some solid scorers from North Rockland to get it done today. And when we get back, we'll have the opening uh, face-off here on LMC Varsity Sports. Alongside Ron Moretti, I'm Charlie McGraw, opening face off one by the Tigers, and Tori will take it, and he'll snipe one towards the goal and be just wide. Angela Zoda in goal, and Jack uh, Freed is the counter, counters him for Mamaroneck, and a shot on goal, and another one. Rob, looks like Mamaroneck doesn't want to wait 55 minutes like last game to score. Wouldn't that be something <laughs> if they take 50 plus minutes to score in the previous round and score in the first minute of this one? They came close. Conley with a nice hit. And yeah, they almost did score. They had one off target, and then the next one, Zoda had to make a uh, good save. So it'll be back to Ryan DeHaja, and he'll play it in a little further than he wanted to. You could hear DeHaja from here yell, my bad. He knew it was a little too far on that chipping. We'll get a new line too from America. Right. It seems like it came it came out of the face-off flying. They're kind of starting to even just one minute and really start to settle into playing their pace. And you and I both know uh chap is is nothing uh but a motivator. <laughs> Absolutely. You definitely know that he was uh probably not happy with that effort, even though they got the win, but they um and to emphasize getting off to a fast start in this one. First time they'll carry it plus the thing and they'll be uh, plus on Mamaroneck side of the ice and they'll be off sides too. So 13.51 and maybe two seconds have been spent on Mamaroneck side of the ice defending the rest on offense, but they'll drop here after the offsides. Right, and Shep told us after the last game, it's not that he was too upset with the effort. The effort was there. He said he was scared. They had a first round bye. You run into a hot goalie, and he said that in the two sports that he coaches, hockey and baseball, is the scariest in the playoffs because... Oh, what a save by Zoda. A hot goalie, or in baseball, a hot pitcher can end your season. Excuse me, sorry, as Notif had that shot point blank on uh, Zoda, and he made the save. Zoda might be as good, if not better, close to it of the Clarkstown goalie. Right, Craig Coon said a fantastic How many saves did he finish the game with? Uh, I think 32 or 33. And Freed and, only and had And the shutout, Freed had like nine. <laughs> 30, it was single digits. 24, single digit shutout. And we're not talking about a baseball and a number of strikeouts. No, we are not. We're talking about saves. Although, although uh, barely, we made, barely only had to make nine. Yeah, we barely set, mentioned Freed's name after the first period on Monday. Last check. 
coming in. And, uh, Wojciechowski drew the penalty. Tom Wojciechowski drew the penalty and going to the sin bin from North Rockland will be number 18, uh, Kyle Dutt. So with the fifth, the minute and a half. So as we've talked about a couple times, regular season was 17 minutes and two minute penalties. Right. And not only the, the minus the two minutes, like 17 to 15, but that's a big difference. The power plays right. are now a minute and a half from two minutes. That's a huge difference. A, a penalty doesn't cost your team nearly as much as it did in the regular season. Kind of lets you play a little bit more aggressively in the playoffs, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Venti. We'll play it around. Conley will come. Conley had the assist on the winning goal by uh, Dela. Conley and Torrey both had assists on that goal. And that one towards the goal is just high and wide by Brian DeHaja, one of the three captains. Her gets another one. He puts it up. It's deflected. Soda with a nice save. They're in front. And the official will blow the whistle and won't be scored as after the fact he ran. And that's a late hit on Modif right in front of the official. And he blows it. And we'll see if they'll call it. There's a mad scramble in front of the net. Everyone, Tigers trying to push it in. Red Raiders trying to push it out. The I don't think they're going to assess any penalties on this one, but the official give a stern warning early on. The official said that uh, Zoda had it, uh, and then I guess blew it dead, and then he went in the goal with it. Uh, Dela tries to push it in after, as there's 34 seconds left on the power play. Marinek, what, two shots on the power play? One or two. That was one of the best chances of the game, besides the one by Nodif right in front. This could be their last chance to score on this opening power play. Deheja switches it, passes to Nodif. Nodif has it. Nodif double teams, passes to Conley. Conley flicks it. Dela has it. Four set, three seconds left on the kill. Uh, for North Rockland, they'll shoot as time expires. And out of the box is North Rockland's uh, done. He'll just go to the bench and a new player will come on. And North Rockland's first shot of the game on goal is saved by Jack Free. Penalty box door is open, so keep that in mind if the puck comes back to center ice. One official's near it now. And that one by Dela played there as the third string goalie from North Rockland will close it. That's Sean Gogarty. That's being a good teammate right there. Definitely. It's tempting to try and lean down, but it was too far. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't go. We would have missed you. I might have went with it. That one played in by North Rockland. Trying to fix the scoreboard. There we go. Okay. I think that's right. 10-13. Left in the first spurt. New puck. They get it back. So 10-13 left in the first period. North Rockland, Mamaronek dominated the first three minutes in the North Rockland zone. Now North Rockland's had it for about a minute in the Mamaronek zone. Win the face off and bring it back into their zone and Light will go after it as it's poked in. Uh, no, no icing is, is poked in inside the blue line and is played here by the Red Raiders. As we mentioned, they beat Mamaronek 2 0 in a disappointing semifinal, same last year. Right? Which I believe I, I announced that one with uh, Elijah, and I think it was on a Friday night, though. And I it think may, the snow is not out. I think there was a snow situation and the game got pushed to a Friday, perhaps. Yeah. Not sure. Was it, this, was it the break week like this? Uh, Might have been. Usually this game is. is. And of course, the two teams also met in the regular season here a 2 1 win from Marinick in overtime. Max Nodif with the game winner in that one. Seth and um, it's Steve. And asked this right. With the. Um, Tigers 
have two other playoff games. The basketball game, which they're about to win for boys, and a girls one, which they were down 20 at the half. And uh, at number one, Ursuline, uh, had to win a playing game to get in there. Right. So this is our third playoff game as we did the Rydak out bracket game. Pleasantville out bracket, which I said was like a playing game. They lost by five. And then did you see Pleasantville only lost to Valhalla by five? Yeah. Number two, Valhalla. I was kind of surprised with that. And then as it'll be played up here to Dabbleman, this play to Villeman, plays it to uh, Notif, and it was stolen before he could get a door step shot on Zoda. Eight forty-five left in this first period. Freed with his second save of the game. As Rob mentioned, he only had at nine against Clarkstown. Through the Clarkstown goalie, and that's a goal. Snuck in past Freed, unassisted, scored for North Rockland on the doorstep. It went right through the wickets of Freed, and it was scored by number uh, by North Rockland's Luke Morris. Luke Morris they actually had an uh, assist to Eric Dunn, and he made the first good save to Freed, right. but then uh, and then he got the rebound to Morris as Dunn had passed it initially. Actually, Dunn took the first shot. Right. Dunn took the shot where he made the nice save, and then Morris uh, just put it through the wicket, the five hole of Freed. Yeah, I don't know how he got it in there. there. I know, a bad angle, and the five hole, and the Tigers trail one nothing. We mentioned in the opening that North Rockland has much more scoring power than Clarkstown. They show it here, but Marinick, they can't go another 40 minutes without scoring. Ryan DeHage again, a lot of ice time. He's played about maybe four or five minutes already. That one's roofed high, out of play, and they'll reset. Ryan DeHage, they'll find a lot. Of that was the first time we saw Astorina. Right outside here on this faceoff. Usually Freed, uh, I guess it was a tough play, but usually he makes that save because I threw him. Yeah, like I said, I'm not entirely sure how it got through him, but somehow it slid under the pad. Right, we didn't see it go through. We just knew from their reaction and the official pointing. Right. And Freed's reaction kind of. But it was because of the initial shot where Eric Dunn got the assist and then uh, Luke Morris got the roll. This one in front of Freed and Mamernick better watch out because they can't afford to go down 2 nothing. Last year that's why they went down in the second period to North Rockland in the playoffs and they never got a goal. And Soda I think was a sophomore goalie on that team. And uh, they went on to win the section. They did and I remember they beat Suffer in overtime or by a goal. Yes, by a goal, not in overtime. It's the winner of this plays Suffern or Mayapak. Mayapak in the final. Oh, that one nearly went in, but Freed stopped it. He had it, and they tried to knock it free. And Conley and uh, Finnerty will have a, some words of exchanges. You know, just where are you getting dinner after this? <laughs> Sal's or uh, Smash Burger? So many options in this town. I know, right? Look at so at least if North Rockland wins, here. they're not going to stay. So winner moves, they're not sticking around here for dinner. They'll probably go to Buffalo Wild Wings at the Palisades Mall on their way home. <laughs> Didn't I, the basketball team from they America did. up, but they on, hit it on up the night, night before, but then they, they got, got snowed, out. snowed out. The roads were a little slick yesterday with the bus. I don't think yesterday would have been a snow day. It probably would have been an early dismissal yeah. if they weren't on that. And that save made by Soda on the shot by uh, Manda Har Rodriguez. Getting some early ice time. Mamaronic, just like they were against Clarkstown, they're getting their opportunities, they're generating offense, they're putting shots on goal, so it took a while for it to happen, obviously, in the, pre in the previous round, but got to keep your head up and just keep doing what you're doing and hope you get one through. So that was, yeah, it took, it was less than a minute into second overtime, so it was 52 and a half minutes, right? 45, with the three periods, and then 
Seven and a, a half. 30 and then 29 and seconds in the goal kick. So it took a second shy of 53 minutes. Right. And they had 33 shots. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. What year was um, the senior? The Clarkson goalie was a senior. He was a senior, yep. yeah. Yeah, a rare um, opponent uh, tweet from you. You even shouted him out on Twitter, uh, the goalie. I think he earned it. Yeah, definitely. What was his name? Um, Craig Coons. Coons, yeah, Craig Coons. K U N Z. Yeah. As the, they battle for it here, my Louis Mondejar uh, Rodriguez dumps it in. Pass the arena back in. So, just came on the ice about two minutes ago, and now he's back on, and they play it ahead. Nice move there by uh, Carrier. Wojciechowski in on it. Wojciechowski, one of the biggest players on the ice for both teams. He has a hard hit, and it's played around, and the shot on goal is stopped before it gets to the goal by, the, by Tyler Loga, and Freed, nobody close enough. And he can as Wojciechowski and the uh, North Rockland defender Anthony Marina exchange pleasantries. And that was more like, what are you doing? <laughs> We're not having dinner later. <laughs> 521 left in this first period. It's a great hockey game going on. We don't have to keep talking about dinner. And the thing is, though, you hungry? Is a great... No, no. But the thing is, I had that Anthony Sway. <laughs> The Texan? No, but we'll need for days after that. Going back to, uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> going back after, it wasn't the Godfather. I was just going to say before, we had not, we didn't see De La Torre and Conley for almost five or six minutes, and now they're back. Well, Marinick runs so many lines deep that they could give their top liner to a decent amount of a break, and that's really how they won the Clarkstown game. Coach Shad told us after the game they knew that Clarkstown was gassed, so they had the depth advantage and it finally played to their advantage. Conley did a good job to just keep it in as North Rockland shot is wide. Six shots by Mamaronek, six saves by Zoda. Four shots by North Rockland, three saves by Freed. Lone goal was with about nine minutes to go in the first period. Give or take, if that's an icing. And then Coach Schaap is getting uh, upset that they were saying he touched it. Brian Asia thinks, I think I heard him touch it. Yeah. It's a matter of fact. Yeah. We've got three officials Let's on the ice. That's, that's another set of ears. Uh, something definitely touched that puck uh, right around center ice. Don't want to critique the officials, that's not my thing. <laughs> I heard something. I know, I know. But that, that'll only be a problem if... Um, An audio replay? <laughs> no, if they... Uh, if like right off the face off they scored or right. something. Because they weren't... Um, it would have been a dump and they would have had a reset. It's not like they were going to score off of that. So the official calls off sides and they hustle back. Ryan DeHasia, the four minute mark. So the nine minute mark left in the first. The goal was scored by Luke Morris, assisted by Eric Dunn. Only penalty was uh, fought off by... Were there a lot of penalties in that first round game, in that second round game? Uh, not, not a whole lot. There were a few, on, on a couple on each side. Not a, not a ton. As we said, a minute and a half penalties with the two minute... Um, was the only the regular season. As we said, they played 17 in regular. And Ryan DeHage, I think he got hit in a very sensitive area. And we'll be right back on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, Ryan DeHage was able to skate it off. But he was upset with the officials and it looked like he got a shot to a sensitive area. And was, uh, there was no call. Well, regardless of where he got hit, he was upset that he got hit. Tigers will deal it back when they have to. It's Conley laid out the Eric Dunn. Nice move and a save made by Freed. 
And it's stuck in the net and stoppage of play. Yeah, on the back of the net, just resting there. Even though it's taken out by them. And they only give you a second to get it out. They don't want it sitting there and have people poking at the net. So they just call for the stoppage there. You surprised by this start? Uh, not terribly. The both teams come out flying. Hits are starting to get a little bit bigger as we get a little more into the game. About what I expected so far. Looks like the Mamaronek was going to score in the first minute of the game, but Zoda made the save. Mamaronek looked good from the faceoff. They won it, and they had that one shot 10 seconds into the game just wide. And then the next shot, 50 seconds in, they nearly scored. And Mamaronek had suffered only teams to get buys. They would have played Fox Lane, but Fox Lane had a game snowed out, so they didn't make the playoffs. Actually, Fox Lane didn't get a game snowed out. A Fox Lane opponent had a game snowed out, and that uh, resulted in them not being able to pick up a, uh, a bonus point. So, nonetheless, though, the snow affected Fox right, the Lane. the snow affected Fox Lane, but that could have played directly. Him Even though that would have been a big Mamaronek win, that might have actually helped Mamaronek in this. Oh, they will not score that! Right in front oh of the goodness. goal! That's that a penalty on North Rock, but Fight, but this game's got a fight brewing here. <laughs> this is an NHL game. I think we can see the gloves drop in the next five, ten minutes. get too physical and pick up the penalties for it. Second penalty for North Rockland. But that would have been their third penalty if they didn't score that goal, too. Offsides, Ryan DeHage. So Kamal Ryan DeHage scored the goal, even though a penalty was coming up. And it looked like Tom Stewart had like a wide open goal. Right, like a, well, a you gotta give 10 all the credit seconds. to Zoda on that because he just yeah. went down and saved it. He did, he made a great save on that sequence. And then after he missed the wide open goal, Stewart, uh, after the save, Brian DeHage then scored it. About 10 seconds later, assisted by Tory and Baker. Although the refs had it different. But if they're able to kill it off the rest of the period, there'll be six seconds left to start the third, I mean the second. Conley will bring it up. Conley towards the goal. He passes it back to DeHasia. Stayed on side this time, plays it into Dela. 30 seconds left, they pass it to Denti. And back to Ryan DeHasia, just wide, telling him to shoot as he had the first goal. 26 and a half. Tried to knock it down with a high stick out of Denti's area. Although it's not the NHL, he could have played it, but he didn't want to get caught out of position. And Ryan DeHazen, they'll have one chance there. So he took a shot on that, as it deflected in. Tori will hustle after it. He's checked. This one will come around. Ryan DeHazen, a good play to stop it. Six, Denti will have to play it from a long distance instead of just dump it in. And it'll end the first. So a 1-1 game with the Tigers and North Rockland and 
That was a fun first period. Very good one. Uh, so we'll be right back on OMC Varsity Sports. Second period, tied at one in the section one division one semifinals. The Mariners wins back the face off. And that final six seconds comes off that North Rockland penalty. We're back to five on five hockey. And they got the door shot this time. Ryan DeHaja shot sailed right over the goal. Another slapper back the other way, a breakaway. Come here, he scores! Eric Dunn! who scored the first goal gets right. the assist. They reverse it. And Kyle, Eric Dunn gets the goal. He 28 seconds in, and it was at, at the end of a chance, the puck kind of squirted around, and he got loose and done, and not a good job by the defense as they just let him go in. Yeah, and a great a job by Eric Dunn as he scored the, um, uh, the goal with the sniper shot pass. Uh, free, who had, there was nothing, an NHL goalie might not have been able to save that one, and that was a perfect shot. Yeah, it was a, a shot from the blue line that was blocked, and sometimes those get dangerous as this one sails wide of the cage. North Rockland in the corner. A little backhand shot from the slot by Finnerty. The Tigers trying to get it out of the zone. They finally do into center ice. North Rockland gets it back in. Dunn brought it in off sides. It was that block goal that led to it as it went out. And that was um, the difference there. And that was, that was blocked and it went to uh, Luke Morris who passed it to Eric Dunn. And, and Dunn, as soon as he saw the block, just took off into center ice and no one was there to catch up with him. And Ryan DeHaja went after him, uh, but it wouldn't be enough. As Dunn had a head start and was able to beat him, but not the start of the wanted 28 seconds in. North Rockland had won the face-off. Tigers trying to send it back the other way. They get it in the zone. Top controlled. Logra at center ice. Sends it back in again. Tigers have to clear the zone. So North Rockland can regroup here. A minute 30 into the second period. Set all the way behind and around. Wojciechowski picks it up and clears. Barrier had it briefly, Astorina in on it, and it goes off the glass of the penalty box. And this one will be sent down. That day rims it around the boards. Wojciechowski again clears the zone, but this will go for icing. So Charlie North Rockman really bringing on the pressure here in the second period. It's resulted in one goal on some aggressive play, and they've been out possessing a Marinick since then. Yeah. Still on the scoreboard, nine shots to six, but the one, they're up 2-1, and they've had the two clear goals, and they've been in this zone, as you said, out possessing. Uh, to start the second period, they've been in the Marinex zone for most of the first period, I mean, most of the second. And it's too close, so they wave off the icing. And Tori passes it forward, but Conley's there, but so are three defenders. And it gets uh, knocked around here, and they play on. Tori could now. Tori actually gets it back now. Into the corner, Ooh. trying to center it, and no one's there except the North Rockland player. Just missed Conley, Rob. It's brought up by Morris. Has a goal and an assist. That one goes wide. This Comes is, out to Bialik. This is danger time for Mamaronek. You can't give up another goal and, and go down 3-1. That one was blocked up by Ryan DeHasia. Another shot was deflected. And Conley trying to steal one away. Might have a two-on-two -two break if they hurry. Conley further up and just could not catch up with the puck. Ryan DeHasia keeps it in. Send it deeper, comes back out to him. Slapper goes off the stick. And back the other way, this could be a break for North Rockland. Morris shoots him at save by three. Another opportunity in front. 
was loose for a second in the slot. Tigers are able to clear it out. That it was, was deflected. It was touched up on its way out of the zone, so no icing. They saw that one. That's why it didn't reach. This might be icing. It that is. is icing. If he passed that, if Morris passed that, that could have been ball game right there. Yeah, if they go really up three one, right, they got to be a bit more careful. When they had the three puck. on one, they had a three on two right in front of the goal, uh, right in front of the goalie uh, three. And instead, he took a shot that he hit wide. And three wasn't going to have the guy in the middle. If he passed that, that could have been a dagger. It's early. And that, it still would have only been two goals, but that would have been a huge lead. Almost another break on that sequence as Vermeernik really needs to make sure they get back on the puck. It's not sloppy, it's just being like a couple bad bounces and just... And North Rockland has a lot of speed. Dude, that one hit the post, side of the post. The, the bad side, like the, not the goal side, so that was... But it's a post is a post. Post is a post. Gotta be more careful, the defense, sloppy. Four in the corner. Up top, that was O'Connor who sent it back in. O'Malley on it now with Loga. Several players from both sides in on the puck near the boards behind the net. O'Malley trying to come away with it. Still trapped. Now they get it out. Possession stays with North Rockland. Out in front, three to the save, and it's cleared away. Nearly another goal. That one would have been by uh, Hilliard. North Rockland with a lot of pressure on the net right now. Jack calling for an icing, something you don't hear often, but they just want to get it out of the zone. And they, and they just can't. barely can't. Now it finally does come out. And I think we might have a penalty coming. That's what he called. I didn't know that actually. I know. Did you see that though? I That's did. That's what he did. I was like, I was like, what? A traveling on the Merrick? So this North is a bad first, first, first power, uh, play. power play for North Rockland. Their dangerous offense. Out in front, Freed covers it up. This is the game. Well, can't go down three-one. This is a good time that it's one third, a minute and a half, and not three. I mean, two minutes on the minors. Right. The official asked if they wanted to change. They want to make a change. Neither team did. Conley gets it out. Conley and Tori chasing with Bialik. Bialik gets to it first. Maybe a shorty's just the time to, to score and tie it, but they can't get a shot off. Back the other way, the Red Raiders go. Morris carries it into the corner. Behind tries to wrap around another Ooh. opportunity. That was a great save. Five, three. What a save by Jackson. Kick save and a beauty. 40 seconds left on the power play. Tigers change now. Daylock comes on. Dente on as well with Brian DeHasia. And Michael Torrey. Under 30 seconds in the penalty. North Rockland taking their time. And they'll try to set something up with about 20 seconds. That shot was saved by Freed. Is Finnerty behind the net with Ryan DeHasia into the corner. Yeah. Into the slot. That one whistles wide of the net. Bialik stops it up. Four seconds left in the penalty. Shot at the end is gloved by Freed as the penalty expires. to get that door closed, they do. Max Notif is on it. And he will uh, Max Notif. We're back to five on five. And at the perfect time, Freed made the save and the clock wound down. So, his face off in the Marinette zone. The 
will be a five on five. And after that power play, they went ahead 11-9. Actually, they didn't count that last shot, so 12-9 unofficially. Mamarinek is trailing now, and that's waved off. And North Rockland doesn't understand. I'm not sure why either. It wasn't that close or anything. Coming up with it is Hillier. In the corner looking for someone to pass it to. Up top a save. And Freed will hold it. Good shot there by uh, Anthony Marina. 8.05 to go. Not even halfway done with this second period. So not even halfway done with this game. Regulation in this game. And it's 2-1 North Rockland. Goal and an assist for Eric Dunn. Goal and an assist for Luke Morris. The junior and the senior. Morris the senior, Dunn the junior. And a goal for Kamal Ryan DeHasia, assisted by Torian. Jackson Baker also is in the penalty box. 0 for 3 combined. 0 for 2, Mamarinek on the power play. And 0 for 1 for the North Rockland. In the Mamarinek zone, Tigers trying to clear. They do. Will Jakowski chasing after it with O'Connor. And O'Connor gets there just in time to stop the breakaway. Connor used his speed to beat Wojciechowski, who's a big guy, so he's not the fastest. And that was the difference, even though he's got those big legs and stuff. And he had like a, a bowling pin hit there as two guys, he kind of went into two guys. Fire, yeah. Because they, because Wojciechowski kind of touched one guy and then they both went down. As we're inside, halfway done with this second period, 7 10 now remaining. Mamarinek yet to have. A golden opportunity in the second period to tie it after giving up the goal 50 seconds in. To this period. carries into center ice. Ori still is body off of it. Good Red defense. Stopped up by Daylock. Conley. Miss. Swing and a miss. Gets it back. Sees Tori open the slot and just, oh, that's a flexion. Did it go in? No goal. Wow. What a save by Soda. How did that not go in? That was like swing and a miss by Conley. I was thinking he's a good lacrosse player. He doesn't play baseball, so that's not surprising. And then, then they get it back. Tori gets it. Uh, he has like a backhand move towards the goal. And then the backhand of Conley looks like it's going to go in. Right on the doorstep. And then a snow angel saved by Soda. And it's still save number nine. He's only had. Two, one save. That was the first shot on goal. It took not eight and a half minutes. And it was one of the best of the game. That and the kick save by Free. Faceoff in. stays in the zone. And Zoda makes the save and covers. So no shots in the first eight minutes and 24 seconds. Then two shots in six seconds from Amerinek in the set, in the last six seconds. Well, perhaps the ice tilting a bit back in their favor. They gotta put it past or else. That's it, or else. There's no game on back. <laughs> Michael Torrey scores it on a sniper deflection. And if uh, Zoda's not going to, if he's going to sprawl and make saves against Mamarinek, he'll get beat by his own guys uh, deflecting the puck. As well, Torrey's shot right. was a sniper. And if, if they don't deflect that, that's not even going to be on goal. That's going to be high or wide. But instead, it deflected perfectly. But he, he took a good shot right off the face off, and it's a penalty on Torrey. And he hit him in the face. That could be a major. That's not good. Right so off after scoring. We'll Torrey. see what it is. Got him from a high to a low. He scores the goal, and now he's headed off. It's a high stick goal. Just a minute and a half minor. Just That's a, minor a break. Penalty. No blood was drawn. That's a good thing. Yeah. The goal, Charlie, sometimes, and that's why so many times you preach to just throw the puck on the net. You never know what it's going to hit and if the goal is going to be able to react. Right, and it hit uh, the North Rockland defense and went in. 
but also it was right off the face-off. I think that helped, like a second after the face-off. So they had that th the three shots on goal in eight seconds, and that's how they scored. And that could have been a trip, right? That looked like a trip, Rob. Borderline. Right on the board. That one will be cleared out. Conley almost had a touch at it. Things quiet down a bit here after the game-tying goal. Small crowd because it's uh, President's Week and they had the uh, basketball games going right. on. President's Week, as I said, the but, uh, to a little loud now. crowd and enthusiastic. Both teams have uh, their fans here. Might see some fans that were at the Lamaronic Fox Lane boys basketball game make their way in. Lamaronic did win that game. They go to Mount Vernon for the quarterfinal. Saturday? Not Saturday. And the girls lost to Ursula ending their season. Lamaronic played Mount Vernon tough one game, I think. They certainly did, so they're not unbeatable, but you got to like come 12. out with your best game. One of their best outcomes in a while against Tom Brennan. Always a top team with the legendary, legendary yeah. coach. He is like uh, the John Savage of boys basketball. Dela, Short just wide. Tiger is having a real good penalty kill shift. That one, another one stopped by Zoda, deflected into the netting. But the face off would come down. Samino, the Mount Vernon basketball coach, he has to basketball at Mount Vernon as to what John Savage is to field hockey at the Meredith. I think he's more of a Sarsen type in terms of how many championships is one. Obviously, not a knock on John Savage at all. Savage has two state championships, right? I think Samino has. Well, he has three. John has Savage has three. Samino, I'm not sure. He has several. Which Shaq have? Three? Uh, two baseball. Four. Three baseball, one hockey. He also only coaches one sport. Right. Well, is, isn't that? Well, assistant, he's an assistant and the girls lacrosse. So if they won one and he was the assistant, he would get, well, yeah. no, not really. He used to be the head coach. He right? was. Not one he cleared all the way out. Easy. Zona thought about covering it. He's going to play it out. You have to Actually, actually put it by. through notice. And nice. Nota keeps it in the zone temporarily. The penalty is out. Torrey's out of the box. And Mondejo. Mondejo Rodriguez onto the ice from America at five on five. Luis Mondejo Rodriguez. Nodip tried to skate it out. Now gets stopped off by the official. And Rob, the question is, the final 437 second period, will somebody score and take a 3-2 lead into the locker room? As it was 1-1 one, one after one. And now it's 2-2 two, two with 425 left in the what is this the second period? As that's an icing. North Rockland has iced it several times from just shy of center ice. This one has been all in uh, all we could ask for. It's been dead even. 13 shots on goal apiece now. And so that's 11 punch. saves for Zoda, 11 saves for Jack Freed. It's been punch and counter punch. North Rockland scores, Mamaronic scores. North Rockland responds. Mamaronic comes and evens it up. Another. I think they're going to not allow that change. It was too late. It's like a prize fight here between uh, two of the sections best. North Rockland wins the faceoff in their zone, but it hasn't been able to advance it out quite yet. Off of the line, and Loga able to keep it in. Wojciechowski chases with Carrier. Just missed Wojciechowski for a look in the slot. And that one comes past Loga. Chasing it is Morris. Morris with a save by Freed. Second opportunity also stopped by Freed. That's how they scored the first goal, Rob, off the rebound. But they can't do it this, that time. That's exactly how the first goal was scored. And it was Morris, and it might have been. Doors in the ice, and sometimes it can get stuck under a door. Is that what happened? Which door was it? <coughs> oh, the, the bench door. Through the bench door, or somewhere in the corner, not really sure. 
we don't have the best angle of the near side of the ice up in the press box. Tigers win the faceoff. Tori does get it out off the North Rockland defender. Trying to force a break here, couldn't quite do it. Skated into the corner by Kyle Hernandez. And out it comes to center ice. North Rockland trying to advance. Loga stops it up. Red Raiders change. Ooh, that one went on net. Freed was ready. Tory holding. Just barely got out of the zone. Finnerty stopped up the pass attempt. And now Morris skates it back in. Has it knocked away. Conley settles it down, tries to skate it out. He had Just a it off the puck and it's chipped back in. He had Dayla, but he couldn't find him. He got hit before he could release it. It's rimmed around with two, just over 2.30 left in the second period. Tori does get it away. Dela will try to send it all the way in, but it went off the stick of Bialik. That's because they wanted a full change and they got it. They do get it regardless. It's flipped out of the zone. Dabbleman catches it at center ice and sends it in. Noted. Nice. Finds it the stick, shoots a save by Zona. Dalman couldn't settle it down for another chance. Ooh, a big hit. That will be penalized as Nordiff is down. And grabbing his grabbing leg. Grabbing his leg. They called it right away. Good call. Let's see what it is. Let's see what the call is. Shaftown has to check on Nordiff. So they have the two refs and the one linesman. And the other ref had the other. Tori right in front of the penalty box. Flipped out of his own Ryan DeHasia has it. Now Dente carries it in, sends it deep. Hopped over the stick of Bialik. Comes out to Ryan DeHasia. He passes to Tori and pops off the wall away from him. De La chases it down. Dela shot. Wide of the net. Ryan DeHasia. A deflection score! Oh! Michael Torrey from the ball. Ryan DeHasia. And the Tigers have their first lead of the night. And first power play goal, Rob. What a play. What a shot by Ryan DeHasia. What a deflection by Michael Torrey. And 3-2 Tigers on the power play goal. Assisted. So he says. Does clear out the penalty, so we're back to five on five as Even North Rockland tries to retake the lead. We gotta fix the board. Penalty. I'm a Marinac. The question is, uh, it is a penalty. Okay. You know, just wasn't sure if it was a penalty or if it was an offside call, but it is a penalty. It looks like Dabbleman. Dabbleman knows. Assist. 
with 48 seconds. So, so they'll have it for the rest of the period unless they score. Biala keeps it in with the skate. And they start the third. So then North Rockland, if they don't score here, they can go in the locker room and have a game plan for what they want to do on the uh, power play. They'll have about 45 seconds left. Biala shot stopped by Ryan DeHazio, who chips it up the ice. Tori chasing Biala. Tori could get, if he had scored uh, there, he would have had a shorty, a power play, and an even strength goal. What is, that's called the, uh, I don't know, that's, I don't know what that's called. It's not, <laughs> definitely not the Gordy Howe. That's the, uh, that's the Gordy Howe is a fight, a fight, a fight, a, um, a goal and assist and a fight, something like that. Yeah, but if they don't have fights in, in no. high school, it would be like a major penalty, yeah, a goal and an yeah. assist. What's the call? Out here. This just changed with North Rockland doesn't like that move because they brought it out. They don't understand why they're bringing it out here. They're still asking the official why. I'm trying to get everyone's attention that the penalty box door is ajar. I think that's good enough. That door needs a little fixing. Nine and a half. And uh, they let the let the clock run out, so that's not good. Boy, this has been some period, huh? <laughs> the penalties, the goals, the, the door, the, the clock. The door, the yelling, the screaming, <laughs> the bad calls, the bad identifying. I, I think the clock's set for 90 seconds. What is this, nine, nine minutes? minutes? 90 seconds, we're getting closer. 99 minutes and 90 seconds. It was about 10 minutes to, uh, before oh, the and, game started. I think they had it. They had nine seconds. There we go. Back to nine. So all in all, there was 9.5. To another complaining about the, the penalty time not being right, but the official saying they will fix it at the end of the period. It's not going to affect the next nine seconds. Sometimes with the, the three officials, it's too many cooks in the kitchen. Definitely. Face-off is chipped into hey, the netting. Hey, you were criticizing my talk at dinner. You have the cooks in the kitchen reference. <laughs> A lot of uh, fourth referees out there. Face off is going to be in the zone, which I'm not sure how that's right. It's deflected shot. It was deflected from center ice, but okay. This is an official they always have, who I think is pretty good, and he's not working this game. And they will get to the end of the period without too much further incident. That 3.9 took a while. So we get to the end of the third, uh, second period. It's 3-2. Mamaronek leading North Rockland. It's been quite the adventure so far. We're not done yet. 15 minutes left to go. Third period coming up next on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Long side wrap already. I'm Troy McGraw. North Rockland wins the face off. They have 38 seconds left on their power play. And they, it is cleared by uh, Denty. Twenty seconds left on the power play. Ryan DeHaysha, that's good as it gets air time and it doesn't hit anything so they can still play it and waste a couple seconds up in the air. And it'll be brought in here by North Rockland looking for their first shot of the period as they have three seconds left on the power play. And it's over. Dayla will come in from the bench as Gavelman is out of the penalty box. And it finally back to Dela, intercepted by North Rockland, and they lose the puck. They had a chance there, but they lost it. Dela has it now towards the goal. He shoots, and it's a bad save made by the North Rockland goalie once again. He's been pretty good, has uh, Zoda. 
And that was a, hu a huge save as they needed that. Automated 4-2. Both goalies have made some great saves. That's how good the offenses have been today. That doesn't go for icing. It's, it's, it's how often a 3-2 game after two periods is that goalies have been great, but they have been. That line is played in. Dela tried to score, but it's stopped by the defense and brought up by Marina. Played it to Christian O'Malley. O'Malley, one of the smaller players on the ice, gets hit by one of the bigger ones, uh, Tyler Loga. And that shot is wide by Marina. O'Malley has it. He swings, plays it back, and De Deva has it. Or actually, Dabbleman, excuse me. Dabbleman has it. Plays it to Ryan DeHaja, who has a goal and an assist stolen by North Rockland. Notif keeps it in and makes a nice move, but it is poked away by the Red Raiders, and they will push it forward. Played by Freed. 18 shots and three goals for Marinette. Five. 15 shots and two goals for North Rockland. 13 saves for Jack Freed. 15 saves for Angelo. Angelo Zoda. Behind the Mamaronek goal, cleared up. Tori has it as two goals and an assist. Both teams end to end still creating chances, so pretty much the same as the first two periods. We play the same way here in the third. But no golden uh, chances yet uh, uh, through the first three and a half minutes. Mamaronek. Took their first lead of the game at 3-2 with about two and a half, three minutes to go on the goal by Tory, Assisted by Ryan DeHaja and Genty. That one's towards the goal freed and getting hit hard was Loga. Dropped his stick, he's got a hurt hand but he can't get out of the play as he'll limp to the bench even though it was his arm. Dela has it, Dela shoots and a save made by Zoda. Is high off the glass, missed by Eric Dunn, who has a goal and an assist and, and a Dunn's penalty. Hurt. And Dunn looks hurt. So we'll step aside and be right back as Eric Dunn is laying on the ice. Back here on MC Varsity Sports, and Rob, that was very good to see Eric Dunn. He got hit hard to the ice. Clean hit, everything was okay, and he fell. And there's another hit right there. But uh, it was good to see him come back up uh, after a couple minutes in, oh, in hockey. That's always scary. Because the trainer had to be, well, just as she was walking out though, with uh, Ryan DeHaja escorted her out, as she went out in her snow boots, um, she was, Dunn was getting up, so. But luckily, he's still sitting on the bench. Now he's moving around and going to the right. Should miss a shift or two. Uh, hockey, one of the scarier sports for, for injuries. You're going at such a high speed, you've got a hard surface, you've got walls, you've got poles. A lot of things that can really hurt you. The boards, exactly. It was right in front of the boards, but um, definitely he went down to the ice. He got hit. I think he just lost his bat. He wasn't really hit, I don't think. It might have been the way he lost his balance when right. he shot, the way he landed. Can't really right. tell. Yeah. Regardless, glad that he's it looks able scary. to skate off. Yeah. It's scarier than it was. Uh, you always have to hold your breath, especially when he was down for a couple of minutes, but got a couple of guys shaking up and no injuries really. And Ryan DeHazer's shot nearly went over the net, but it's deflected and goes up and out of play with uh, 940. Uh, they'll have to stop the clock. We'll be right back on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, and this game is just turned into a free-for-all. This is not what semifinal hockey is about, Rob. That was clearly 940 
The ref says to put 9.48 because the guy running the clock ran it 20 seconds later. There's been a lot of confusion here. And this is not, this is, doesn't look good on, uh, it's disorganized, it doesn't look good. As this one is wide. I, I saw 9.40. Uh, the back. Ref said 9.38. Done already? That's a little quick. So he went out with 10.40. He comes right back in and he nearly scored. That was the best chance of the third period. And a nice pad save. And the shot is Steve Varsity Sports, alongside Rob Moretti, I'm Charlie McGraw. North Rockland thinks that's a double minor, four minutes, but instead it's just, when they, with the new penalties here, but that, that would just be, uh, was, is a double minor three or four? Uh, a double minor is three, a major is four. Oh, okay. They think that should have been a three minute double, as Corey has it short-handed, he passes to Conley. 
side, and it's off sides, and they don't like that call. Nodif is in the box, though, elbowing to the head. They thought it should have been a double minor or a major. Instead, it was a major. Uh, I mean, instead, it was just a minor minute and a half, and that was off sides there. I'll tell you, the officials have, have deservingly so gotten a lot of abuse from the players and coaches. And this is the semifinals. These should be the best officials, and unfortunately, they haven't been. They made a lot of mistakes. I don't think that was offsides right there. That was, it close. was real close at best. And that could have made it 5-2 shorty. North Rockland will call timeout. We'll be right back on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, class uh, division one. Section one semifinal between North Rockland and Mamaroneck. 4-2 lead from Mamaroneck. Penalty uh, that the Tigers are trying to finish the kill of. And a smart timeout by Coach uh, Dwork Dworkowitz as they, with 105, they wanted to, they, you only got one timeout. Right, but they but this to, is where you want to refocus the troops. This might be your make best it chance. Because you have a power play. And although they haven't scored a power play goal, and this is their third power play. This, will be the, this is their third power play. Because Nodif had the third penalty of the game. Baker had one and DeVilman had one. We got a new iced, iced, iced puck uh, in, up here. So they keep the pucks on ice in the bucket. They've been killing Denti. Ryan DeHaja have been killing this power play the entire uh, power play. Minute and a half and they still do it. Because they nearly had a two on one on the short handed, but instead they had, they called off sides on a bang bang call, very close. As there's 540 left and two seconds left and out of the box comes Nodif and he'll go right into play. Usually they just go to the bench, but Nodif is one of the best players and they have to shut the door. And Shaft does it as the shot is played by North Rockland on the ice is Nodif right in front of the official and he calls a penalty on North Rockland. So we're on Nodif again. Jeez Louise. That looked like that was on North Rockland. Nodif will go back into the box. That was a jostle between Nodif and I think Nodif and Bolivia. Noted for holding. Yeah, I think that's the call. I think it was holding, right? For interference? No. Holding or... Did he actually deliver the call? Yeah. He went like this. Holding. I thought it was against North Rock. But instead it goes against Noted. So Noted gets up. two in a row. Which is interesting because they never usually go on to the ice. They usually right. go to the bench and somebody comes in. Instead, he went into the ice and then got another penalty. And it's five what you want. Right. As he goes on goal, wouldn't have been icing, obviously, since they're on the kill. And that's good because Gayla charges at the goalie and they drop his stick. Yeah, it was a hole, definitely. On notice. But they were both holding each other. He was looking right at him, but. This is a chance for North Rockland to cut it 4-3. Already used that timeout, remember? And they Conley will rough them up here at mid-ice. Brought in by, and they look for offsides. Instead, it's a wide shot with exactly one minute to go. This is the fourth power play. Right in front, looking for a call. and. We have a lot of fourth and fifth officials out there. <laughs> well, if you get into a big sectional game and it gets late, people are going to get a little excited. 51 seconds left on this power play, and they, North Rockland desperately needs to score here to make it 4 3. Marinek, it was 2 2. They were down. They were down 1 0. Then 1-1 one, one after 1, then 2-1, two, and then they tied it. And then they were 3-2 after that. And Dana has it. A 
not really a breakaway as it was a one-on-one -on -one and he took a shot. And that's good because that just wastes time. It took about 10 seconds, 15, and he got it on goal and he forced Zoda to make it. And now we can play a little keep away, Kevin Marinick, with 30 seconds on the penalty. And North Rockland has to play with more urgency, Rob. Certainly uh, down near four minutes left, you're down two goals. The numbers would say you almost want to think about pulling the goalie soon, although you never see him come out this early. If, yeah, there's only 10 seconds The numbers left. disagree with hockey coaches at every level. But. If they had the puck in the zone with about 50 seconds uh, on the power play and they had it in there comfortably, they could have done that. As a juicy rebound from free, Yoda stays on the ice again. Hopefully he won't get three penalties in a row. And the official will shut the door. Notif plays it in to Tori. 3.30 to go. And as you said, North Rockland's got it. Last year, I thought Schnapp should have, he never pulled the goal in early enough. He only pulled him with like a minute left and uh, weren't able to do anything down 2 nothing in the same situation. And if North Rockland can get it out, they should pull uh, Zoto. But again, we don't expect Zoda. him to. It's no and one ever pulls that early. Especially in high school. Three minutes down, 4-2. They're not even talking about it on the bench. As I would pull him right here. You saw someone down three in an NHL game, like with nine minutes they pulled? Well, the, was against the there, Islanders. there's a certain set of data that says, you know, with five minutes left, if you're down two, statistically, it, it, it's better. Yeah, but if you pull there, then stop and you lose because you gave up a goal right there. But who knows what the extra yeah, Who man knows because done. the sixth guy on the ice could have been impacted the play. Good job by Pastorino to try and stuff a goal, and he can't. And without a stick is. O'Connor and good job by Mamaronek as they'll just keep it in the corner and let the clock as Astorina battling again and the Red Raiders look to do it and they get an icing call. Oh, and a Ooh. late hit. That is a very late hit. I don't How know is if that, that was not a penalty? I don't know if he really hit him or if he just tripped. Charlie Milan gets drilled into the board by Eric Dunn. They're not who they really didn't keep up. I seem to have to keep him on the ice. This game could get chippy here. Ryan DeHage is doing a good job. I think we should add him to the interview too. We'll Maybe interview him and, uh, certainly doing a captain's him and job Tory, here. Yeah. Him and Tori definitely will interview. Because he's had the assist on the thing. And, He's, he's had to be, really had to be get, like yeah. the bouncer. Uh, God, it's really easy to, get, to have your emotions get out of check in a big game like this, and especially when it gets physical. He's had to be like the security to calm his teammates down. Because Budzikowski just came onto the ice for no reason, and that could have been a penalty. It could have been. Although, sometimes you don't know if they're changing and he's going in. He wasn't. But they keep it in front, and they don't let the Red Raiders pull. The goalie as it's right in front and Tory looking for the hat trick. He gets taken down and he's hurt right behind the goal and they'll stop play. Now he'll get up. And even like the play he gets in the face of the goalie as he was. North Rockland is really showing bad sportsmanship. I think it's both sides have been a little questionable on that front. As he's laying on the ice and the goalie starts chanting at him. Well, that's not good. I know. But 136 to go in. Another question becomes where does the face off go? How is the coach who's saying that's delay a game? How's that delay a game? That's not delay a game. I think he, maybe he's hard hard faking an injury. Maybe he's faking it. I don't know why you fake an injury there. If somebody starts cursing, oh. how is that not a call? I tell you, bad sportsmanship all around here. 
but I, you know who showed very good sports? We talked about Ryan DeHaze, right? Yeah. And, and, and Shaq has been pretty good. Uh, yeah, most of what we heard from him is telling his players to stop yelling at the ref. So all North Rockland has done is screamed at the officials and the coach as well. When you're down 4-2, it's, it's getting a little bit over. Now they pull, finally. And they get the extra man on. And it goes to Conley with the empty net, and he will miss it. Just wide, it was a bouncing pack, and he couldn't put it in to make it five. And they try and go back, Dela's there, and Ryan DeHaja has it. He tries to knock it in, it's kept in by North Rockland, Conley kicks it around. Meanwhile, the clock is at 45 seconds and counting, and it's a 4-2 lead from the Marinek. And that shot is stopped, and a hit by Seward. Uh, Seward. 34 seconds. This was a good game. It got a little physical and chippy, but overall, as this one winds down with 26 seconds to go, it'll go out for a faceoff. Pretty good game, Rob. This has been a great game. And, you know, as far as the chippiness, and, and like I said, and, and the high emotions, it's a big game, and, and these are two top teams. Playoff game, and emotions are going to run high. You've got to keep them in check. It'll be an interesting handshake at the end of the game. As we'll see, the faceoff here kicked out North Rutgers. Infinity. Morris got it. 20 seconds left. And De La gets hit. Actually, that was not De La. That will win. And it will be put in and scored by Seward. So Seward scored back in that. And that'll be all she wrote. Stavlman will shake it up. Official will have to say who scored, but it was Seward. Empty netter with 8.1 seconds, 5-2. And that'll just about put a nail in it. Assisted by Max Notif. I think maybe nine, Jake Spano. See? Back here on the post game show with Michael Torrey and Michael, it was a great win for you guys. They eliminated you from the playoffs last year. It was a good revenge win. Tell me uh, how it felt to beat them in this semifinal 5 2. Oh, it felt amazing. We came out knowing we had to play well, knowing we had to get the first goal, which did not happen. But we came out firing after that, got two quick goals. They tied it up. We came out even more strong in the third period, and you see the outcome of the game. We won. Right, you're up 3-2, and then in the third period, you guys played one of the best periods you've played all season. Agreed. Uh, tell, tell me about that third period. Um, we came out in the huddle over there. Um, we were just saying defense first, play, play from the goal out. Um, we came out strong, got two quick goals, got an empty netter also, and um, we played extremely well. And uh, from the onset, as last game, you guys uh, didn't score until about the 55th minute to score in double overtime at that. Did you guys stress when you uh, practiced and the other thing? Because in the first minute, you guys nearly scored twice. 
Yeah. So that you guys must have really been talking since that game about trying to score right away, and you almost did. And it took about 13 minutes, but then you guys scored five more times, yeah. including one empty net. Um, in the during practice this week, uh, we worked on a lot of high-low tips, uh, burying the puck in in front of the net, because during Clarkstown. Uh, a lot of rebounds and we were swiping at them, missing them. So we worked on a lot of that during practice and uh, paid off, played off well. And you'll have to bring the offense again as it will probably be suffering. I think they're up 2 nothing against Mayapak. What are your thoughts if it's uh, that? Um, we got to come out strong like we did when we played them uh, earlier in the season. Um, we got to got to shut them down offensively and uh, come out hard. All right, thanks. Back here in the post game with Kamal Ryan Dehasia, one of the captains of the team, and. Uh, Kamal, it was a great win for you guys. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, you know, it was a really hard-fought battle against North Rockland. Uh, one of our big things is to come out and try to score first. We didn't get that today, but I think that uh, we fought back really hard after we went down a goal and then went down another goal. We are down one nothing and then ended up down 2-1. And uh, I think that shows how much we've grown over the year, just really being willing to fight back and dig deep and fight against a really good team of North Rockland, an offensive powerhouse in the section. And you had that goal. Uh, you shot it, and it was, um, I think it deflected off a, a defender, and it yeah. went in. And yeah. that was a, a good goal that you had uh, from defense. Uh, tell me about that shot you took, and uh, it looked like your shot was on tonight. You had a couple chances, and uh, you had an assist as well. Yeah, well, that kind of play, the puck, everyone was scrummed down low, and the puck popped out, and I was like, I'll go for it. I'll just take a one-timer and see where it goes. I was trying to put it low and hard. I didn't want it to get blocked. And I got lucky enough that I don't know how it went in, either tipped or went through his five hole. That was, uh, that was a great feeling. I didn't even see it hit the back of the net, but I just saw everyone celebrate, so I decided to go too. Um, and then just from the point, I think I got a lot of uh, more opportunities tonight than normal. And I'm just trying to put it where we can get sticks or rebounds. That's my goal. I'm not trying to blast it by anyone. And we got a nice tip from Tory, which was a hell of a play. And that really propelled us with a great, he had a fantastic game himself too. And uh, it's nice because as a defender, you don't really get to live in the spotlight. You just kind of sit in the side and do your job. But getting a couple shots on, getting to celebrate with the boys, that's awesome. And uh, at the end there, you guys were up 4-2, and there was like a lot of chippy play from them. But you were, we could hear you from the press box uh, trying to get everyone to calm down on your team as a yeah. captain. Um, tell me what that was uh, like in uh, – and you were, most of them were listening to you there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope a lot of them, a lot of them did listen, some of them didn't. But I just, uh, I really wanted that. I, I don't think they, they, I really want them to see the future that we have a big right. game coming up against Maya Packer, Suffern, whoever it is. Right. And that is the section, that's the section finals. Right. And you don't want to run your mouth and not be able to play in that game after you've done all this hard work to get here. So I was just saying like, you got like two minutes left. They're angry, obviously, because they're not going on to the next round and it might right. end their season. Just keep your heads, keep your mouth shut. Just let the refs do their thing. Just, as long as like, you make sure you just don't get hurt and you do your job, and that's it. If you're not a captain, don't speak. All that kind of stuff. Back on the post game show, the Tigers coach Mike Chaparelli. Coach, uh, a, a big game for your team, especially having to come back after trailing one nothing and two one. Yeah. yeah, I give the kids credit. I said, if they get the first goal, we wanted to get the first goal. If they get the first goal, we got to come right back, and we did both times. And then we took the lead right at the end of the second, which was awesome. Our goal every time is to try be in position and going to the third, the chance to win the game. And we were in position today. It seemed like both teams were playing pretty evenly the first period to two periods, and then towards the end of the second, things kind of started to tilt your team's way. What do you think contributed to that? Well, we went with four lines. They went with two and a half. Third line got out there a few times for them. They kept bringing that first line out, which got them really tired. Um, we tried to match, but I'll match their first line with my third if they're fresh and then they're tired. So it worked out well for us. We did a pretty good job. I mean, uh, they gave, we gave that quick break game in a second. To come back from that, that was a pretty tough blow right away. I give them a lot of credit. You know, for a team that was 1-5-1 and one, and won the section finals, we've come a long way with a very young team. And I give uh, Tommy Conley and Kamal, Ryan Deasia, uh, Freed, great props as captains for keeping these kids together and keep working game got a little physical especially in that third period uh, it seemed like your team was able to keep calm a bit more how much do you think that can help your team especially as the games get bigger and bigger we stress that we said they're gonna lose it it is kind of play keep your heads let them take on the box and they put us in the box but um, our kids did the right thing and kept their heads and I think it helped us overall 
likely going to be suffering in the next round. I think we had them up 2 nothing at the end of the first period against Mayapak, regardless of who it is. What, what's your uh, philosophy going into uh, Sunday? Well, hey, we're one of the hottest teams around. If it's suffering, they're really hot. If it's Mayapak, they're really hot. So it's going to be two hot teams fighting for elite first section championship. So uh, we like the opportunity to go into a game. Anything can happen in the uh, finals, and we're there. Back here on the post-game show following the 5-2 win, and it was a uh, great moment, as we heard, from uh, Ryan uh, Deheja and, and from uh, Tori and from Coach Schapp. Um, three really good interviews and explanations of the game there. Certainly. Uh, it's a well-spoken, smart group of guys, and uh, they showed it out there on the ice. Yeah, it was a great game. They both played well, and uh, their offense came to play today as they scored five goals, albeit one empty netter. Uh, and last game, it took them 55 for one. 55 yeah. minutes to score right. one. Right, right, yeah. And I think they knew they had to match the pace. Against Clarkstown, they, I think they knew that uh, the offense wasn't going to be there as much for Clarkstown as it would be for, for another opponent. Against North Rockland, North Rockland put the pressure on them because right away they had to, they were down one nothing. They had to go and respond. And I think that helped them kind of glide into their offense in that way. Yeah, so it was a great game and maybe one of our last of this winter season. So a good way to end it is Mamaroneck 5-2. They'll probably face Suffern. They're up 2-0 after one, but stranger things have happened against Mayapak. So that game was delayed because of scoreboard issues. Pretty funny uh, sentence. But <laughs> nonetheless, Mamaroneck uh, will face the winner of Suffern and Mayapak. And as I said, Suffern's up 2-0 after the first period. So a 5-2 win. Marinick into the sectional final. A lot of people to thank after this great game. Their camera crew who did a uh, good job today. They were uh, Jordan Harper, uh, Francisco Ferrizi, um, and our other camera crew was Gary Francois. And once again for Ron Moretti, who was also the community sports producer. And our uh, executive director um, is Matt Sullivan and the assistant executive director is uh, Dina Schumacher. Once again, I'm Charlie McGraw saying thanks so much for watching and have a great evening. If you are interested in sponsoring this or other programs on LMC-TV, contact us for more information.